Like I'm straight out of the jungle, jungle. King like a lion, lion. I'm a set of time, time. We've been talking for weeks and weeks, and I've been waiting on them to come. I listen to their music. It's dope, dope gospel music. But today is about them. So, guys. Out of Baltimore, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Born and raised? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Be more in the house. <laughs> East Baltimore, here. Yeah. Can you guys introduce yourself for me, please, please, please? Well, like, my name, my artist name is Traylo. You know what I mean? But everybody calls me Trey. Um, I'm from East Baltimore. Um, I have a wife, and I have a, a son named Caleb. A wife name is Ty. And I just make music for the Lord. I, I'm in the ministry, you know what I mean, for the Lord. So, Can you please tell my audience how old you are? I need uh -huh. y'all to hear this. 22. 22, yeah. wife and kid. Yeah. That's rare nowadays. My name is Cody, Pastor Owens. Um, my artist name is Lamb. And uh, yeah, there we go. Simple. <laughs> 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 married, for, married for 15 years, got three boys, um, 19, 8, and 6, and, uh, yeah. Pastor, y'all, so be good. You got the pastor in the house. Oh, uh, ain't got to change up for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's real, y'all. Um, so what made you all want to make this music? What made you want to gospel rap? Where everybody, you know, they still, I know some elder people still kind of turn their nose up at oh, it, yeah, but absolutely. what made you want to do gospel rap? You want to start? Well, uh, yes, yes. So when I, um, I've been doing music since I was 14, but it was like secular music. It was worldly music. It was, you know, talking about weed, talking about guns, talking about just sex and all type of stuff. But I felt like when I came to Christ, I felt like I needed to stop doing it. So I was just like, all right, maybe I should just put this music up on the shelf because I felt like music was a big part of my life. And I put it away for a while. And then I would like, I, I, for my life, I would like sell a lot of stuff that was important to me. And then I had this studio in my in my room and I was like, man, I just can't sell it. I can't sell it. For some reason, I just can't sell it. And then I felt like, it's like, it's like a, it was an impression for real. Like it was like, the Lord was putting it on my heart. Like, look, you don't have to make music for the world, but you can make music for me. So I came to Christ Amen. and it was a hard transition. And I started rapping about Jesus and some people liked it, some people didn't. I lost a lot of followers on YouTube. I had like maybe 400 subscribers on YouTube at the time, which is not a lot, but it's still a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And the numbers started dropping. Like so many people just started unfollowing me because I was talking about Jesus. But, yeah, because yeah. they don't understand. Yeah, I was a teenager too. I was maybe 16 when I started rapping and um, it was secular. You know what I mean? And it was about the stuff that I was getting into, uh, stuff that I was going to get into. It was almost like I was prophesying over myself, to be honest. Like because some of the stuff that I'd rap about that I may not have done yet started happening. Mm. And so um, then I made. Um, long story short, you know, I got my walk right, my relationship right with Christ, and then I made the transition because at the time I really didn't see a lot of. Well, I didn't really see any gospel artists as far as rap was concerned that I that I really vibed with. Okay. And so I started making music that like, look, I make this because I like the way it sounds. You know what I mean? So if nobody else, at least I listen to it. And then um, then uh, for a few years, you know, I, I made a couple albums back then just for me to listen to. A few years I put it on the shelf and, uh, you know, focused on other aspects of my walk in Christ. And then recently, um, within the last, what, four or five years, you know, he started, he was doing music and I'm like, yo, like we doing the same thing. We walk in this walk together, you know right. what I mean? We out there ministering and everything. So like, yo, why don't we make this music? Why don't we put together an album together? And uh, I really can see that as a stepping stone to open the door to be able to build up the kingdom. And so. Amen. And it's fire. Y'all need to go check it out. At the end, we're going to get all the information. What does a walk with Christ look like? If I'm a, um, a young person and I'm, I'm lost. I'm in, the, I'm in between. I got my one foot in the world. I got my other foot, you know, at the door of Christ. But I just I just don't know. I'm on that double standard. We know what the words say about being double standard. What, what would the walk look like? How would you explain to a young person to walk with Christ? What did he do for you? And how did he move in your life? Like, I know how he moved in my life. Yeah. I was all over the place. Yeah. I, I can tell you, I all over the place. I had my twins, became a single mother, like, what am I going to do with these kids? You know, so 
for me, my kids was like, okay, this is my turning point. I have to do better for myself. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a little older now, so it's a little different, but we're going to start with you, Trey, since you're the younger right now. Pastor can tell us how we're going to get there, but you can tell us from a younger, because out, out here, we need that. We need your age. Your age is a critical age right now. It's, it's people out here not even making your age. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're dying at 13, 14, 15 years old. So to make it to 22 in this world right now is actually an accomplishment. Yeah, so real. what made you say, okay, Christ is who I'm going to live for, who I'm going to die for? I get this for the presence. Cause it's, it's funny to me because it's like, I gave my life to Jesus at 18, and I could feel it, like I feel him, like, because it's, it's so interesting, because it's like what made me turn was like, because I was a Muslim for four years. So I became a Muslim because I wanted to feel close to the family. I wanted to feel close to my brother. My brother's been locked up um, since he was 14. He's 20 something right now, and um, he got 40 to life. So mm -hmm. to me, I was trying to follow something. Like growing up, we're always, like, you know, as young men and young women, we're always trying to, like, find that group of people we can connect to. But I realized, like, my family was just like, oh, he's different, he's different, he's different. I'm like, I'm not trying to be different. I'm just trying to be me, but I just, right. I'm different. But I felt like it was more so looking at me like it was a disability or something was wrong with me because I just kind of stand off, standoffish and stuff. But um, so I prayed one time, and I know it sounds crazy, but I prayed one time in the shower, and that's where I found God at. Like, And um, I was just like, all right, I don't believe in a lie no more. I heard this little whisper, and it was like, don't say a lie, but say God. You know, so I was just like, all right, God, if you're real, show me yourself. Show me that you love me. Um, and I said something about, send me a girl that will love me for me. At this young age, my mind was just like, I just needed somebody I can connect to. And about three months later, I met my wife now. Um, she was my girlfriend, and she believed in Jesus. And I, I believe, I'm going to try to make it short. She believed in Jesus, and I believed in Allah. And she was like mind blown. She was like, I didn't know a Muslim, Muslim can be black. You know, I was like, I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I was a Sunni Muslim. So I practiced it. Um, uh, I prayed, I fast, I prayed for five days. I was trying to learn as much as I could. Never had an encounter with Allah, never really connected to him. Right. Um, but for some reason, I got to this breaking point in my life. And I was just like, you know what? Like, I, I told my wife at first, I was just like, look, you, you know what I mean? If you don't get married to me, like when you get married to me, I'm going to miss my blessings. That's what we believe. You, you, I'm going to miss my blessings if you get married to me. Um, and she was just like, she started doing some research. And one of the things that popped up online was you would have to reannounce your Lord Jesus Christ. So she wasn't doing it. You know, you had to stop believing in Jesus. So she wasn't with it. But she started praying for me. And it's crazy. The prayer of the righteous uh, availeth much. So God listens to the people who are practicing righteousness and his children. Right. So he listened to her. And out of nowhere, I just started into this breaking point. I don't want to do with a lot. I started having these spiritual encounters in my house that I've never had before until I met this girl. And like, after that, I just stopped believing in a lot. Went through a transition of uh, a lot of suicidal thoughts, depression, and anxiety, and fear, and smoking weed. And none of it was working, and I just felt worse. Like, I was going to kill myself at the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And I came across this video one night, and I'm trying to sum it up. I came across this video one night, um, and my wife was asleep. She was my girlfriend at the time, and she was staying with me. And it was about this guy who had an encounter with Jesus. I'm like, nah, man, that's fake. That's not real. And there's a number at the bottom, CBN. I don't know if you know about CBN, the 700 yeah, Club. Yeah, yeah. And I went on there, and it uh, and and I wanted, and it had a number, and I had to repent. So I wanted to give it a try, and I called her. There was a lady on there, old lady, and she said, um, she said, well, what we'll brings you here today? And I told her my reason why I was there. I said I'm 18 years old, and I want to see if this Jesus is real. And she started leading me through a repentance prayer. I repented. I said I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that He died on the cross. And rose in three days and I accepted him to my heart or something like that. And at that moment, I felt like a hand on my left shoulder. And I was sitting just like this. And I felt power go through my whole entire body. And Allah never touched me like that, but Jesus touched me like that. And ever since then, I just kind of been like on fire. Like everywhere I go, I share it. You know what I mean? Whoever I talk to, I share it without being ashamed. So that's really, I hope that answers it. Oh, it's a it lot. Answers. It's a lot. But oh, it, it definitely you know, answers. And that's exactly how Jesus makes you feel. I'm telling you, when you feel it, that Holy Ghost shot up in your bones, man. So. <laughs> well, how much time you got, buddy? <laughs> As Straight much up. time. You the one that got to take the wife out. So, right, 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 you right, know. Right. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the original question was, I'm not, not going into testimony, but it was. 
what does a walk with Christ yeah, look like? like? No, that's good. Cool. 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 Yo, cool. you know, I, you know, know I've been trying to get this story like, out of you for a while. It was weird. Yeah. But it, that was your walk. That's what it looked like to you. Well, okay. So okay. It, it was answered. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, it's about having both feet in him. You can't have one foot in Christ and one foot in the world. I was there. You know what I mean? The fence, the fence belongs to the enemy. If we're on the fence, it belongs to the enemy. Okay. And so what it looks like is us looking like him. It's not about coming to church with a suit and tie on. It's not about coming to church every Sunday. All that's good. It's fine. You know what I mean? But ultimately, it's about me manifesting the son of God in the earth. It's about you manifesting the son of God in the earth. And um, the scripture says, it's like when we look at the word of God, it's like a mirror. When we're looking and learning about him, we're really supposed to be learning about us. Mm -hmm. So there's no time for confusion about anything. There's no time for depression. You know what I mean? There's no time for, for anxiety and fear. Because when I look at that word and I see him, I'm supposed to see me. Right. They called the, they called the disciples Christians first in Antioch. Um, and basically, the disciples, they were closest to Christ. And they looked like him. Right. You know what I mean? Um, as far as in their actions and what they did. Love and power. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times we go to these churches and there's no there's no power. There's all talk, it's all talk, it's all talk. Talk about it. It's all talk. Uh but the pastor's banging all the women. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> and, and but but this is what we see as church. You go in, you look good on the outside, but you're dead on the inside. Amen. And so that you you you're in the building, but you're not in the building. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So walking the walk is really looking like him. Walking in love and power, not one or the other. We can walk in power and right. not have love, yeah. but we can walk in love and not have power. It's about putting those two together and really living it. So if if there's a situation between my brother, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll give you an example. I was downtown. Um, I do commercial cleaning throughout the week okay. and uh, for, for the second job. Um, and there were these two homeless guys that we see every day. We wind up developing a good relationship with both of these guys, baptized one of them. The other one never got around to getting baptized, but I always pour into them, you know what I mean, and um, hook them up if you got food or whatever, hook them up. And then one day, he come over to me. He's like, man, I don't mess with him. I don't mess with him no more. He's, of course, he's using stronger language. Mm -hmm. I don't mess with him no more. Like, yo, what happened? What's going on? Man, he went over there. I told him, look, give me some time out here on this strip so I can make some money, too. You've been out here all day. I just want a couple hours. And he wasn't moving, so I pulled a knife on him. And then he runs over there and tells the cops. And so I'm like, I'm like, all right. I'm like, all right. Right. And so um, they weren't with each other when I was down there. But then I went up top, and I'm at the 27th floor, so I can look out over the city. And I look down, and I see him, like, intimidating him. He's going across the street. And I'm like, nah, look. And my son, my oldest son, was there with me. And I'm like, son, can you finish up up here? I'm going to go down there and deal with them. And so I'm like, hey, hey guys, come in, come in, come in. I pulled them both together. You know what I mean? Because, again, if we're manifest sons of God on the earth, then you are the answer. Right. You are the answer. Not, uh, oh, God, please bless them. Please. No, no, no. Well, guys, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. What's going right. on, guys? Like, what are y'all doing? Right. You know what I mean? And got to talking to them. I, I got both of their hands. We prayed together. The next day, they were buddy-buddy. <laughs> they were buddy-buddy the next day. But there was that there was that something in between them that we had to address. Right. You know what I mean? So walking this walk, what it looks like is being the answer, not being afraid to step out and take a risk. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to do that because I'm afraid it won't work. Well, right. without faith, it's impossible to please them. Yeah. So that's a short version, I think. I, think I, did get all the time. I mean, you basically. Yeah. That's 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 how I got this started. Actually, I was I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Procrastination. Actually scared now. I don't want to be in the camera, but actually scared. <laughs> and my cousin, he's the one that he was like, just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah. It could go wrong and you try it again. So I can really, really understand that. So how long, how long you've been married? 15 years. 15 so I was years. I like in my early 20s when I got married too. Oh my goodness. And you were working on. I've only been married for two years. Two years. I've been together with my wife for five. Y'all hear this? Look, let me tell you. These men are handsome men. They are lucky. 
So y'all thought I was going to say women lucky, but no, they're the lucky. Because it said, man, I find it for wife. Find, find a is a good thing. <laughs> and they, favor. From the Lord, and from the favor Lord. from the Lord. They found some good things. So how do you feel about these people going crazy about this co- coronavirus? I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen, oh, we're worried and we worried. And you know, oh, when you're living in Christ, that word is non-existent. You you know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do to protect yourself, but at the same time, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, I mean, what you got to say to these people out here about that? Let them know. Everything that I say is, like, really based on Scripture. I try not to use too much, like, just giving Scripture and uh, the, the, the number of it and all that. So <laughs> I would say that God, Jesus said that... um. He's given us a, not a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. So if he's given us that, right, like he told us to go out. He told us to the site with children of God to go out. Believe it shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Like I hear it a lot. Everybody's like, whoa, you got to do this. You got to do that. You know, I don't mind. Look, you, everybody, look, I wash my hand in general. I'm a you delivery man. I wash my hand in general. I'm you know what I mean? Hospital. Yeah. You know what I mean? We <laughs> wash our hand. We can only do what we can do. I'm not ready to walk around with my face covered like I'm in China somewhere. Like, that's just not going to happen. Like, right. I'm going to walk around trusting that Jesus said that if I lay hands on somebody, they're going to get healed. I'm walking around believing that Jesus is, the, I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. He had a temple of the Holy Spirit. We had a body. So he lives inside of us. He lives right. inside of us. He's been born again. And, and think about it, like the Ark of the Covenant, right? It was the Ark of the Covenant. People would touch that thing and they, their body would die. You know what I mean? They would drop. And that was just the presence of God. It was just the presence of God that was inside of it. We have the whole being of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, living on on the inside of us. Like, I trust, and I guess it all depends on faith, but I trust that when some type of sicknesses try to touch me, that it would die because Jesus is stronger than us. Amen. You know what I mean? And that's just just where my faith is on that. So that's my response for anybody that's watching these videos or listening. Um, If you really trust Jesus, and I know everything is a growing point, it's like you got to keep growing, keep growing, and I'm still growing. I just would say that comes to a point where you have to stop being afraid. I won't live in fear if I trust Jesus. I love God, so Amen. I won't stop now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to touch on it. When it goes um, with coronavirus, most people want to know what the coronavirus, when we think about the coronavirus, right? Right. But really, we should be finding out what the coronavirus thinks about us if we're children of God. Uh, if we're children of God, like the coronavirus should know that that's death for me over there. Right. I'm going to give an example. Um, you gave a great t- example of uh, what you're talking about, but there's a guy who was in the early 1900s, John G. Lake. And he was uh, over in Africa and there was a black water fever, a black water plague or something like that was killing people. And him and his team was going in there taking out the bodies so they could get disposed of. And there was so much junk on them from the bodies that they had to come out, they clothed it down in their underwear, but they're still getting people out. And the scientists are like, oh, like, how y'all doing this? And John G. Lake's like, you know what? I believe that when this stuff comes in contact with me, it dies. And he took a vial that the scientists had, poured on him, oh, oh, they poured it on him, looked under the microscope, and the stuff was dying in his hand. It was dying in his hand. So if I have, we have the same spirit. The right. spirit that lives in me, it's the, if it's the spirit of God, it's the same spirit that lives in you, if it's the spirit of God. And so he did say we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So why are you going to get sick from from lay being hands. obedient, walking in obedience? Uh, yeah. In Psalm 91, verse 7, it says, A thousand will fall at my, right, at my side, uh, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Do we trust what the word of God is saying? Oftentimes we don't. And then in verse 10 it says... Um, no evil shall befall thee, nor come nigh thy dwelling. Are we going to trust what the word of God says? Are we going to look? The news is putting out a lot of fear. <laughs> Definitely. It's putting out a lot of fear. Definitely. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's and so crazy. if I'm looking at that more than I'm looking at this is what the word of God says, and I'm going to stand on this, then I'm going to be susceptible to all the stuff that the news is saying about me. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's just, it's just really about renewing our mind to who we are. Now, I get it. Um, he said, you had said, um, you know, if you believe in God, then this stuff. And so somebody, I know somebody's out there saying, well, I believe in God, and now that don't make sense, and I still this, that, or the other. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And it's not attacking nobody's faith. Definitely not. But it's not my intention. If, if I'm doing fifth grade math, and you're doing 12th grade math, right. you know something that I don't. Right. And I just need to either be like, you know what? Honestly, I'm not there yet, so I'm going to stick with this for now, but I can get there. If I'm trusting what God says, I can get there. 
But I, as a 12th grader, I'm not supposed to look at you like, you, you stupid. <laughs> you don't know this 12th grade man. Right. You can get here. Come on, let me show you. Let me show you. Right. Let me show you. And that, and again, when we're doing the music, it's another avenue for us to open up a door to be able to teach people, to build people up. Um, the five-fold ministry, if you look at Ephesians 4, the five-fold ministry is to grow people up to, to the, the fullness, fullness of Christ. Christ. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not just, I'm a pastor, bring all your sick people to me. No. I'm a pastor. I can teach you how to walk this thing out. So right. you don't have to bring your friends to me. Absolutely. You, your friends get to I'm you. so glad you talked about the fact because we have show pastors yeah. Yeah. where they don't want the congregation to grow beyond watching them. You know, yeah. you touched a little bit about sure. that. And I, I, I came from a five-fold church yeah. where I learned and my pastor taught and he's more of a, he's a teacher he's a pastor so i'm glad you kind of touched on that so do you think you know have church became a big show now like people are leaving yeah. you know people are leaving and young people aren't coming yeah. and those what we need yeah. so we got the elderly people staying so the church is growing older and and they're dying. Like and then the younger is not coming because they believe in spirituality and the universe. That's crazy. You right. know? Yeah. So what what do you think we, what what direction do we you think we need to go to draw them go, back in? Go for it. Go ahead. Power. I mean, Jesus, he's power. The right. Holy Ghost, he's power. Like, I think that I, I got saved in my room. Like, in my mom's room, like, it was me by myself. Like, I was in a room when I encountered Jesus. You know what I mean? I wasn't in church. And when I tried to go to church, I felt rejected. Right. You know what I mean? I felt weird. Like, everybody was judging me. And, like, mm -hmm. it was, like, it felt crazy. Because I was, like, my wife had a bag. And she was had, she had Crohn's disease. And she was sick. And that was an autoimmune disorder. And her body, her immune system was just weak. And she was skinny. And she was dying. And, like, you come to these churches. And a lot of these churches, I'm not condemning nobody. But the building say... You you know they lay hands healings you know uh you know legs growing out and I'm like okay let's do it Lord I take my wife in there nobody even offers to pray for her you right. see this bag leaning out this young girl's arm right. so I honestly think you know power you know what I mean you get out on these streets like we always do I've baptized a few people he's baptized a few people and people experience the power of Jesus and some people still turn away but. The thing is, they need to encounter the true living God. These right. people are looking for connections to get to God, but can't can't grasp it yet. They can't understand it yet. Right. They need to encounter the true living God. And I guarantee that that power that they experience from the Holy Spirit is going to be way stronger than that new age. And that's a bold statement. That's a bold statement. Yeah. But it's true. But yeah. it's true. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand because I was... Bold statement. I see it all the time. And again, I always tell people, I'm not knocking what you believe in. Whatever gives you your peace. I know who gives me mine, but <laughs> I'm glad you made that statement because I had the same thing happen to me. Church hurt is real. I need people to know that we go on in these churches, especially the elderly people. I had um, did a Bible study. I It was something calling me. I had to get to a Bible study. And it's funny because the church that I had just got baptized in, they were closed. It was like around the um, holiday season. I'm like, I, I just, someone's calling me. It was God. Yeah, it yeah, was Jesus. Yeah. You need to get to a Bible study. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And I just pulled up at this random church. I didn't go to the church. <laughs> Never been to the church. I knocked on the door like, y'all got Bible study? Like, yeah, come on in. And there's a room for the elderly people. Oh, a room for the elderly people. And I had the word that they needed for the night. Yeah, I had the word that they needed for the night. I you know, and I and I, it was bold doing what I did, but God had this word in me, and I'm telling them, I'm like, y'all have to stop rejecting young people. Yeah. I and did they turn around right like interested? I've done took over these people' class. I said, <laughs> we want to know the Lord. We want to come. We want to know the power. We want to know what you feel. Yeah. But if you're rejecting us and you're turning us away and holding your nose like you never sin, you know, all saints are sinners. Mm -hmm. We all are sinners, even if we not. I said, you turn away, and you done did some of these things that these young people are doing right now, but because you walked ahead of us, and you found them, and you got the glory, and you seen what it looked like, you know what the Holy Ghost looked like, you turn the nose at younger people like us, and then you make us not want to come, and we don't feel welcome. It was an elderly lady that made me feel welcome at a church that I was about to leave, because 
I came in there. I got a dental swim boys. I'm all over the place, okay? They're my first kids. They telling the pastor to shut up out oh, loud. No, They're like, what? Like, shut up. Like, because he was talking and my son, he like, it's too loud. And they making all this noise. And so, of course, the noses started turning. The eyes started cutting. It was one elderly woman. Come here, baby. Give me one now. I got you. Gave me a hug. I got you. My son sat there. They sat quiet. She gave him a piece of candy. And from there, I knew Jesus was in. He was He was looking out for me. But if I had to look at everybody else in the room, I would have never went back to that church. Yeah. <laughs> never. One love person. Love. love. She showed me, and every time we came in there, she, come sit by me. Yeah. Don't worry about nobody else. And this is what she'd say every time I come in, because she seen me looking around, and I felt that you feel people's eyes burning, and I'm just, I just want to come and know the Lord. That's all I want to do. Man, I got this going on. My children, father out here in the streets, he ain't trying to help me. You know, my parents, my father wasn't, um, my father's in Christ now, but he wasn't at the time. So they're not understanding where I'm going. I'm going to church. I'm doing this alone. Just walking by myself, me and my children. Yeah. So if I didn't have that one piece of love, I probably would have said, I want to get this. Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Probably yeah. would have went somewhere else. And like, but I'm so glad that, you know, it's it only takes one person at the time. The, sometimes people don't realize the only God some people gonna see is in you. Absolutely. That's it. They're gonna see it in you. And then after they see it in you, and I seen it in her that day. My kids, I would never forget. My kids had to be one and a half going on too. And they was yelling, acting crazy. But after that, they calm. It was something about her spirit that was calm that calmed my boys down. So I'm glad you touched on that. So yeah, you, cool. how you feel about it? <laughs> Man, you just went over so much that you're gonna have to repeat that question. <laughs> <laughs> I was what well, was the question? That's funny. Um, I was just asking about the show, the big show. Oh, all right. You know, churches. do you feel that pastors are not doing their job? Even y'all, y'all always boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. So I I've, I've been doing Facebook lives about boots on the ground because of these young boys getting killed. Yeah. You know, back then, churches be the first ones out going out here talking about the non-violence and things that going on. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Where y'all at? I've been calling them out, yeah. and I don't I don't care about backlash. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> y'all can come at me and say what you feel, pastors. But where, where y'all at? You know, we yeah. got the regular, you know, protesters and stuff like that, of course, the yeah. activists. But the church used to be the biggest advocate in our communities. You know what I'm saying? That's why they get the tax break. Mm -hmm. You know, where where are they? And do you feel like that is just getting too showy right now? Um, for years, it's always been, the idea of church has always been coming to the building. But Jesus told us to go out. Right. But we're so worried about, oh, I'm going to come into the building. I'm going to take care of me. No, 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 no. You can't touch my blessing. Wow. If God has something for me, ain't nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. you, if he's got something for me, you can steal from me, this, that, and the other, but you can't take the blessing that he has for me. You know what I mean? So a lot of, um, now I don't know a lot of pastors, so I don't want to, I want to be, I like to be careful with my words because I think words are extremely important, oh, especially with the stuff that we do and the miracles that we've seen. Words are important. And I don't cuff anybody with those chains. Right. You know what I mean? But for me, and anybody I teach, like, words are important. So I won't be like, like, yo, dummy, come here, dummy. Like, I won't do that. Right. You know what I mean? Because you're not a dummy. Right. You know, I, I, and so with some of the things that I see, it's just like, it's more of, look at me. You know, I'm this. We were out years ago. We were ministering, giving out bread years ago. That's probably even new ice. And I call Trey Ice. Okay. Because his <laughs> name is Trey. Yeah. And his name is Trey, so I think Ice, ice Trey. Trey. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's out there now. Chill. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we out there giving out bread, and there was this one, this old man, he looked like a pimp. He was sitting up on a, I think it was like a Rolls Royce. He just sitting there looking all cool with his shades on. And people walk by like, is that your pastor? <laughs> I'm like, nah. Excuse and, me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but that, that's the idea of a pastor. Oh, no. You know what I mean? He right. was looking like a pimp just sitting up there cooling. You know what I mean? I'm like, nah, that's not a pastor. You know what I mean? As a pastor, you're supposed to be... Hand, I think as a pastor, you're supposed to be hands-on. Right. You know what I mean? I, you should be able to come talk to me. You should be able to spend some time with me. Not um, you make an appointment, and I'll talk to you three months later. Well, that appointment you wanted to make with me, you were going to commit suicide. Right. And where was I? Right. You know what I mean? God is available for me at all times. 
You know what I mean? So why can't I make myself available at least most of the time? Uh, right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. At least most of the time. Why can't I make myself available? And so there's a problem there. Because the, it, what, what it looks like in the world sees is the pastors are like, gimme, 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 gimme. And they're not really doing nothing. Right. They're living large, but their people are living like paupers. You know, but they live in large. And I'm not saying that the man of God can't be blessed. I'm not saying that. Right. But the like what happens when the world sees how you carry on and what you're not doing or you're living in sin as a pastor, why even come why even come to God? Because you're the representation. Right. You're Christ the in me, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Right. So when like you said, you said it perfectly. When somebody meets me, they're meeting Jesus. They should be. When somebody meets him, and not just for the pastor, when somebody meets him, they're meeting Jesus. Somebody meets you, they're meeting Jesus. Right. But we have to be born again, transformed by the renewing of our mind. Right. Or I'm going to go down a sinner, I'm going to come up a sinner. It's one thing that you said, sis, that sinners, saints are sinners, but God never calls us sinners. Right. Once we've been born again, he says, you're my sons, you're saints. Amen. And so if we readjust our mindset, in, in one of the books of John, uh, 1 John, it talks about, I think it's chapter 4. As he is right now, so are we in this world. He's not a sinner. He's not depressed. He's not confused about his gender. You know what I mean? He is confident in who he is. He's a king. Right. You know what I mean? And he has dominion over these things. So if he has that, we have We that. have that. But yeah. we have an option not to walk in it. And so. Right. Sounds kind of like he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with God. Right. right. And so we're one spirit with God right now. So we talk, you... Yeah, At the end, when you talked about, we choose to. See, a lot of people get confused about free will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want you, Pastor, to explain just a little explanation about free will. Because I hear people, oh, you a Christian. You supposed to. That gets on my nerve. If you don't know nothing about being a Christian. How do you know what I'm supposed to be doing? Right. You know? Yeah. Do, I mean, I, I don't, don't know, know people do that to you all. Oh, you yeah, have, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. tattoo on your face. I know that probably came up. I'm like, like this before Christ. What you talking <laughs> about? Right, right. So you don't know it me. drives me crazy. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I mean, people know that there's an expectation from us. Right. But they're not willing to walk in that expectation themselves. This one guy I used to work with, he's like, man, I would go to church. And I don't want to go to church because they, they talking bad about each other. They cussing each other out and stuff like that. Then I wind up just going to, I wind up going just to see the show and have to get his jollies and kicks off of them dogging each other. Mm. And I'm like, yo, you talk about you, you go, you don't go to church because of all the hypocrisy. Why don't you be the change that you want to see? Mm. Why don't you walk the thing out the way it's supposed to be so you can be that example? But most people don't want to do that. They want to sit back and complain. Oh, you supposed to be this way. You're supposed to look this way. You're supposed to talk this way. But they're not willing to do it themselves. themselves. And right. that's, that's crazy. You gotta be willing to make that change. You said it perfectly, perfectly. Yeah, that's real. People out here want to know, how did you make your marriage last 15 long years? Some people say long, long years. <laughs> um, It's all Jesus. Me, it's all Jesus. I met my wife. Um, man, I was on house arrest when I met my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? But sometime before I met her, I'm like, I knew I was about to start dogging people. I knew that for a fact. And I'm like, Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to dog people. So, Lord, send me somebody for me. Right. You know what I mean? Then maybe a couple months later, I met my wife. Uh, my brother bought her, bought her over. One of my friends that I call her brother. Bought her over, he used to work with her, and so we just all hung out, we used to hang out, then we started vibing. Uh, long story short, we started vibing. And um, then after a while, it was like, Lord, I prayed about it again, if I'm, if I'm gonna marry her, Lord, let somebody tomorrow talk about marriage. And so, um, that was a Saturday night I prayed that prayer. Sunday morning, she goes to church with me, and we go to a second service. First service, nobody said nothing about marriage. We go to a second service, and the woman of God there talked to my wife, like, you, are you married? Are you getting married? <laughs> And so that was my answer. Right. And so from there, like, okay, this thing is it's going to happen. So we got married uh, shortly thereafter. And it had only been a year. We got married after a year. Okay. But I was listening and trusting God. And so because I listened to and trusted God, because every relationship is like, is like this. 
right? Right. Yeah. You, you get closer, and sometimes you drift, uh, uh, and you come back, and then you might drift. But uh, eventually, you want it to be like that. So it's through those times when you're like this, are you going to be consistent in your commitment? Right. You know what I mean? People think that, oh, I don't love this person no more. I don't get those goosebumps. What are we talking about your feelings for? We made a commitment. Love is a choice. Right. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a, a feeling because you can be the only person that can make. Prime example. If you told me, now you're a crap man, Cody. You do not take care of your kids, this, that, and the other. You, you're just a horrible, this, that, and the other. I'm like, all right, shorty, you good. Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not to say nothing to disrespect you, right? But mm -hmm. if my wife would say that, it's like, yo, flip. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> right, right. Da -da 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 -da. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Because she's the only one, the only woman that's close enough to get under the skin. Right. But I think God uses that to build us up. Right. Because the, the identity of a marriage is Christ in the church. And I'm supposed to love my wife as Christ loved the church. So what does that look like? Forget my wife submitting to me as unto, as unto God, because that's what the scripture says. Ladies don't do that a lot of times. Submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Right. <laughs> you know, as Sarah called Abraham, Lord, call him Lord, submit, submit. Like, right. That's what the word of God says. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all had to see him. I wish y'all could see him. Because <laughs> that's how we be. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But regardless of whether my wife submits to me or not, I am to love her as Christ loved the church. He died for the and he died for the church. So if she's not submitting to me, I got to die. Right. I've got to die and love this woman regardless. Expand on that though. You know, some people probably, you know, not on. What if I got to die? Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 expand on that a little bit. Expand on that a little bit. So when we're talking about dying, we're talking about dying to self. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, my pride, right. my ego, you no, know, uh, my, my expectation. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I died on myself. Because look, when I was part of my testimony, I went to church the entire time I was running with guns, drugs, and dealing with women. I was going to church when I had a gun under my seat, riding, looking for somebody. I was going to church every Sunday. You know what I mean? So God never abandoned me. Right. So if he never yeah. abandoned me when I was like, yeah, I'm showing up, but I really ain't want nothing to do with you. Right. How can, if my wife do anything to disrespect me, not submit to me, outside of fornicate and adultery. Right. You know what I mean? Like, how can I say, Shorty, I'm done with you? Because God never said, Cody, I'm done with you. Amen. And so, I hear this, ladies. A lot of information. I hear learned these from fellas. I learned from this guy here. Hear these fellas. <laughs> no, they, people need to hear this because marriage, especially in our community culture, black culture, it's like, if it don't work, I get divorced. You know, it's so easy. It's so easy, easy to put it out there, even when you speak it, even for me, even for me. You know, I was, uh, uh I ain't gonna do that. Smith's mind gonna do this. So, but when you get in it and you don't have no foundation, please speak yeah. about it. It will crumble. You have to have the Lord in your marriage. Yeah. I don't care how much you try. You have to have a foundation. And yeah. I learned the hard way. And please speak about um, 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 Lord, being one. Um, I can't even think of the dang old word. One flesh? No, I know we want flesh, but like-minded. Okay. Marrying somebody like-minded. I okay. mean, you know, I know sometimes you, one may be in Christ, like how you was. Yeah. You know, but you still was on a cuff. She was you shifting was like, was, She was shifting. Somebody had to, like, But when you get mind. there and y'all both worldly, mm -hmm. And then one want to go, but the other don't want to go. I just met somebody that was in that. So if somebody in that situation, how can you help them? Like, what would a prayer like that look like for their significant other? Because a lot of times we enemies. Mm -hmm. And some you looking at your spouse like they're enemy. Like, you out here, you smiling at everybody else. But when you get in the house, mm -hmm. your partner is your enemy. Mm -hmm. But that's because that's how Satan wanted. Yeah. Because it's the first institution that God made was marriage with yeah. Adam and Eve. Yeah. So how can you tell somebody that's like, I, I really want to be in this marriage. But the other person is like, like you said, they they can't get where you at. Mm -hmm. But where can they start? Well, it's, it, if they can't get where you're at, it's not about them. It's about how you love them until they get to where you are. And you've got to have that hope in God. That, Lord, you're going to work. The See, some people, we get religious, and we'll go, well, my husband ain't a believer no more, 
So I can't deal with it. Peace. Or my wife ain't a believer yeah. no more. So surely you, that's dead. I love you. You know what I mean? But that's but that's religious, yes. right? Um, yes. And we're not talking about religion. We're talking about relationship. Right. When you have a relationship with God, that shifts everything. Okay. You know what I mean? And so in Corinthians, it talks about old believing husband. And I'm paraphrasing. Believing husband. Stay with your unbelieving wife. If she's happy to stay with you, stay with her. Because how do you know that you won't save your wife? Amen. Wife that believes and have an unbelieving husband. If your husband is happy and content to stay with you, stay with him. Because how do you know that you won't save your husband? Amen. You know what I mean? And it's just about loving them, continuing to love them. Because, again, I always look at myself. God loved me when I was high, drunk, driving down one-way streets, doing everything that I knew I shouldn't have been doing. He loved me. Right. And he was there for me. You know what I mean? It's not for me to... Wag my finger, and you learn this the hard way sometimes. I didn't have, <laughs> see, I didn't have um, mentorship over my marriage. I made a lot of mistakes. Oh, man. I've offended my wife in so many ways. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so uh, I, le I learned the hard way. And so when I teach my son, or if I'm talking to anybody else about marriage, it's like, yo, relax. You don't got to point and browbeat your wife or your husband to say, this is what you need to be doing. This is how you do it. Mm -hmm. No, right. but we lead by example. You know, the husband's supposed to be the head of the household right, and the leader right. of the household. But I don't have to leave like, show sure, this is what we're going to do here. We're going to do this now. No. I got to put my foot on her neck. God didn't put his foot on my neck. Right. If I wanted to right now, when I leave here, I can go to the strip club. I can. But will I? Right. I love him too much to dishonor him in that way. Right. But he doesn't have his foot on my neck saying, you can't go. Mm -hmm. I know he doesn't want that for me. You see what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so... He doesn't, again, the, the, the image of Christ in the church is, I look at him, we look at the word, again, it's a mirror reflection of ourselves, and we look at him and we model that. So the way I can lead my household, whether I see it now, whether I never see it, is I'm believing that I'm going to walk by example. Lord, this is how you did, and this is how I'm going to do. Right. You know what I mean? And so if uh, the best I see is when it's a, when it's a wife that's not uh, where where. She, where she's in a place of discovery because the husband has that opportunity to say, Lord, this is mind renewal too. And mind renewal, everybody looks like a lie. Mind renewal is like a straight lie because <laughs> my wife, she's not my wife, but I'm just using this example. My wife, she's uh, rebellious. She's always putting me down this, that, and the other, right. right? But I have an opportunity to say, father, I thank you for my wife because she's a good thing. And Lord, you said she is your favor to me. Right. Lord, I thank you. Even if tears are rolling down my eyes, out of my eyes, I thank you. It doesn't, it don't feel good. Right. Father, I thank you that this is a good thing in your favor. But does it look like it? Does it feel like it? Ooh. No. Nah. <laughs> if you up at night crying, dang, I just want it don't it don't look like it or feel like it. But what are we gonna trust? Right. The world will say, yo, you crazy, bounce. Right. Get out of there. I got a shorty for you over here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just facts, be honest. Facts. But 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 the word of God says, This is my this is a good thing for you. This is favor. Because as you go through that and you stick with him, he's gonna shape you. Right. You're gonna grow to the you're gonna grow to the fullness if you let it. Or you're gonna let the enemy use it to tear you down. Absolutely. Because if I don't look at it as a good thing or God's favor, then I can't walk in what he says it is. Right. Amen. Uh, yeah. So do you believe that as you seen in your y'all's marriage, as you submit, as you submitted to God, that your wife is submitting, or is it like you pretty much call a shot? You know, what I'm saying call the shots in your marriage. Y'all talk about it. This is how marriage is going to go. Because a lot of people are like, well, we're not going to do it this way. We're not going to do it like the Bible said. We're just going to bring our own rules into it and kind of do it like that. I mean, you can if you want to, <laughs> but. Um, see, there's a there's a perfect design that God has. And so if, look at this, if I'm dying for my wife and she's submitting to me, then when we fight, we're fighting about, baby, no, let me do this for you. No, let me do this for you. No, I want to do this for you. Right. No, I won't let you. I'm going to do, that's what we should fight over. But most of the times in marriages, we fight because I want you to do this and I want you to do it this way. Or no, I, you, I wanted you to treat me like this. Or this. No, 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 forget that. We need to fight to please the other person. 
whether that's in bed, whether that's their, their emotion, uh, listening mm -hmm. to them, being there for them, we need to fight to please our spouse. Right. So if we're fighting to please each other, we don't have time to worry about, oh, you need to do this now. You need to get out and submit to me. Or you need to treat me like this, that, or the other. Right. You know, we can't control them. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm glad you touched on that. A lot of Christians, they is in about sex mm -hmm. and marriage. If we're talking about sex, it's okay it's holy. if it's marriage. Mm -hmm. It's right, holy. Yeah. Please explain that, Trey. You're young. I want I want the young people to hear why you said that's holy. Well, they're going to because they're expecting to be like it's holy. They're going to expect a code. He be like, oh, it's holy. Oh, he's holy. So he believe nah. that. But as a young man, please explain why it's holy because a lot of people don't understand. So I submitted. I said, you know what, God, I give it to you this time. I tried to be celibate so many times, Lord Jesus. Mm. That's why He helps me. That's why He loves me. <laughs> but. I finally got it right this time. I finally got the perfect prayer he so people is like, you need to get you some. You know what I'm saying? You know how people is they all I'm like, I'm fine. Because before I had my foot, one foot here and one foot here. I'm trying to do it, but I, I wasn't all the way with him. So this time I, I cried out a prayer after my divorce. After a lot going on. After my divorce, after having a baby by another man that wasn't my husband, I had too much going on. I said, yeah. Lord, take it. Yeah. Every desire, every man. I don't even want to see a man. I don't want no man talking to me. <laughs> if they don't even look my way, I would not even care. Because, you know, women, want, you know, they want to still feel like Sometimes they're pretty. I, my attention was myself. And that's right. We do. Okay. Just a little bit. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. Even if they say, oh. You know? Can you say that again? <laughs> Ty, you, you hearing this? Oh, yeah. Chill, God, chill. <laughs> no, uh, uh, it wasn't me. But we do, we do. We love attention, and um, it's just something we just want to, we always want to know. After having a baby, I, you know what I'm saying? Things happen. You might have gained a little weight. You might have got a little smaller. See, I didn't know that. Ever. I know some women yeah. that's skinnier and don't want to be skinny. Like, oh, I'm too bony, you know? Yeah. So, for your man or a man, see, it's better from your husband. Mm -hmm. And this is from an ex wife. I, all that attention, why my husband, huh? not saying nothing, nothing. One guy, they go Satan, yeah. you look so beautiful today. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I? Because hmm. you got this man <laughs> that's not telling you. And this is what you want. I'm going to say, and this for any guy out there. Your wife wants you to look, tip. She don't want no other man telling her that. She want her husband. That's why she married you. Baby, you are beautiful. Yeah. Like, look for the you... whole world, you're beautiful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> look at how you start. Like, look at how when you start off with somebody, you know what I mean? You're, you're trying every, like you told me, but we talked about this. And I even, I remember it like, like when you first trying to get the girl, you like, you know, hey, you look, you know, you look good. I ain't even gonna lie to you. You know right. what I mean? Oh, I like your shoes. You know, you compliment. Oh, you got some pretty eyes. Like you compliment her know at first. Stuff, yes. But after you get married, you know what I mean? You kind of like, oh, I already got her. And that, that was, that became a mindset for me for a while. Like. I already got it. Like I really don't gotta try that. I'm just gonna go ahead to work, get this money, come on home. You know what I mean? Hey, see you tomorrow. You know, we gonna go to sleep. See you tomorrow. Same process. But like you were saying, like you feel me? You gotta compliment your wife. I think wives. You know, I like I like compliments too. You know what I mean? When my wife compliments. Oh, we're gonna definitely. I was definitely gonna get on that. I was about to speak. And why compliment your husbands? I do. I did a um, relationship piece, and that was part of it. It was like no sex, and I'm like. Terrible. What is wrong? If you are married, no, I don't try to speak to, you know, people that is not married. Yeah. But if you are married, do not deny your husband, Lord Jesus. Preach, preach it again. Do Say not, that again. I would tell him. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. even understand what women feel like right there. It's no longer yours. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You married it. It's his. His is yours. Yeah. Yours is his. Give it to him. Yeah. You don't want your man eyes to wander. And then God said be with each other. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he he tells you to. God tells you. See, people be thinking God is this um, prude. God, he don't want you to. He tell you they to be with like your wife. open that scripture. They said, look, to read that, short, to read that. Yeah. I, he's talking about the scripture in Corinthians where he says, if, you, if you're going to fast, only fast for a little while, then you two come back come together. Come back together. So the enemy won't tempt, tempt you. Tempt you, yes. How he going to tempt you, right? How he going to tempt you. Other cycles, you know what right. I mean? You, you a man, he's going to tempt you with a woman. You a woman, he's going to tempt you with a man. Exactly. Right? He's telling us to. He tell you to be with your wife or your husband. Yeah. So I'm glad you got I'm glad you touched on it and you touched on it. Yes, compliment your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her yeah. she's beautiful I, I every day. Yeah. 
Even when she's like, ooh, I got this fat. No, don't and be like, ooh, it that. is fat. You know, some guys are like, oh, baby, you up. is getting a little big. Please don't do that. Yeah, that's <laughs> <up>. <laughs> like, why are you all lumped up in What's going, going on? on? <laughs> you know? Because, I mean, people is so caught up that the world is so caught up on looks. These big old fake booties, fake cheeks, mm. nose, and everything. And they're just not satisfied with how they, God created how God created I mean, And you can them. work out. You feel me? You can work out to make yourself look better. Like, I know it's hard, but you can, yeah. you feel me? If you really want yourself to look good, you'll try everything. You'll eat better, you know what I mean? Whatever right. it may be. Like, but everybody, you know, it's not too. And then sometimes, and it's crazy for single women. You know, single women like me, if you trying to go out and they looking for a big old buffy booty and I just got yeah. Sally booty, oh, you snap. can't, you know, yeah. where I'm going to go, who I'm going to meet. So it, it gets hard in the single realm. But I, 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 I enjoy my singleness. I'm, I'm content with it. And it's the first time I've ever been content with being single. I don't know if I had a, because I had a daughter. This time, like before, it was like ah, I gotta find these boys a father. But now I got a daughter. I don't need her just every man yeah. because to, for satisfaction to give her what her father is lacking. Yeah. So and I b grew up with a father. So you know my dad was in my life, in my life all my life. He's still in my life actually. So there. Yeah. So can we get some rhymes going on? We need to spit. They about to spit some fire, y'all. Y'all gotta listen. The devils walk around seeking like a roaring lion. Don't listen to him, cause you should know the boy's lying. We treading on him, and down there on the floor he's lying. No lord of mine can manipulate what's on the mind with this sort of mind. Leave your prick more than a porcupine. See, be more divine. Don't you be found seated on the line. We roll and find. Share the attributes of the wine. Not ordinary, extraordinary, we otherwise. Don't be confused, not to be mixed with those other guys. We on the truth. And you can keep the lies. But it's in <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. I'm telling you. Tell oh, you. Man. This one is more chill back. It's like, it's all for the king. Got to draw to the king. Ain't start lifting your hands. Don't be lost in the pain. You don't see the sun. It's just foggy with rain. But you're destined for more. So you speak to that rain. Storm, go, light, show, rain. Bow, it ain't foggy no more. I don't want this hurt. I'm not tired, oh Lord. I'm feeling your spirit like fire on wood. Backlash, my past. In the spirit, that's my dad. I'm on the move. Call me Flash. Seasons come and go. Got to think fast. Oh, nah. My son, you really need to take your time. Put your trust in him, I promise it's all right. You're on this water, you're on this road, feel like you're out here walking blind. But it's all by faith and you can't live by sight. No. Yeah, my flesh tell me don't care, but I know that's wrong aware of the devil's plots down here. Trying to separate to kill, yeah. try to break me down and steal. Yeah. My family's whole be healed. Yeah. I'm doing my best down here. So I mean, you gonna stop there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I am love. I love that old hip hop <laughs> feel that y'all got going on. Tell my people where they can go to get your music. To that's me. That's you. <laughs> um, you can go on uh, iTunes. We got a uh, song on iTunes. Um, you search up DES. You search up DES. To the light is on there. Um, I got a few of my singles on there. Uh, Amen. And making me stronger. It's another song we got on there. What's the other Searching. song? Of, uh, no, Search Man on there. Uh, yeah, Alone, Not Alone Out is on the there. Jungle. Out of the Jungle was on there. Out of the Jungle, Jungle. Yeah, that's on there. But also, it's on YouTube. That's easier to find. Um, just search up DES, capital DES, and we'll pop up. Or uh, you can search up DES um, dash searching, and the videos will pop up. We got three different channels. So. Okay, is there an email? Maybe somebody wants y'all to come out and perform. Is there an email that they can get in contact with you um, all? Mine is jacodio at gmail.com. And mine is Traylo Changed, T-R-A-Y-L-O-W, changed at gmail.com. Okay. Y'all hear that, y'all? They done gave some knowledge. <laughs> they done spent some fire. We done had a good time. I'm glad you all came through. I appreciate it. Y'all coming to my show, pushing the agenda. Y'all done push my agenda for the day. And we got to get these guys out. They got to get home back to the kids, the fam. And I want to thank y'all for coming out, pushing the agenda. I'm your girl, Antoinique. And I'm not going to tell you nothing I've been through, going through, or know somebody directly going through it. Peace. Peace out. Peace. All right.